2023 brought many exciting moments for UFC fight fans around the world. We started the pay-per-view year with a short notice fight to try to quell the uncertainty in the light heavyweight division and capped it off with Rocky himself proving once again that he is the new standard at 170 pounds. This year, we saw the highly anticipated return of arguably the greatest fighter in the world and saw him further cement his GOAT status by becoming a two division champion. However, in the same year that one of the greatest returned, we also saw another legend retire and leave behind a legacy that women's MMA will continuously strive to achieve. Also in the same night that we saw a legend return to the octagon, we also saw one of the biggest upsets in MMA. In 2023, we also saw multiple storylines be fulfilled with some lingering possibilities for future matchups. And we even got some glimpses of future stars that we might see at the top of the division in the new year. I can continue rambling on, but in this video, I want to get into more of the specifics of the data for the UFC in 2023 and try to summarize another beautiful year in the world of MMA. Before going into the more visual data, I want to start this off by going over some cool facts about this year. Unlike a certain Instagram post that claimed there was 549 fights in the UFC this year, there's actually only 520 fights across 43 events. And if you don't believe me, check the official website yourself. Of these 520 fights, 248 of them went the full distance to a decision, 159 ended by way of KO or TKO, and 102 of them ended by submission. Lastly, we had 10 no contests this year, either by way of failed drug tests, some interesting referee calls, or some other reasons. But if we add up all these numbers, it only adds up to 519 fights this year. So why is that? Because at last, the remaining fight from this year actually ended in a disqualification due to a fighter throwing strikes to the back of the head. If we compare these numbers to previous years, you'll notice there isn't really too much of a trend in any specific fight outcome in the year of 2023. There is a slightly upward trend for submissions this year and downward trend for KOs, but only time will tell how much this trend will continue for. The one thing that is pretty cool about this chart is that despite the UFC having more fighters and events this year, the amount of no contests and DQs haven't scaled with time and have hovered around less than 10 a year since 2010, and 2023 is no different. What does the data say about significant strike accuracy? Well, if we combine all the fighters' significant strike accuracies for the year and compare it to previous years, we actually find that in this year, fighters were the most accurate they've ever been, topping at around 48%. At first, I thought this might be because fighters are throwing more leg kicks, which, even though a lot are checked, sometimes still count as a land on the UFC stats website. And when we look at the significant leg strike accuracy for every year, we actually find some truth in it. And in fact, this year, fighters have thrown and landed more leg strikes than previous years. But also at the same time that fighters have been getting more accurate with their leg strikes, they've also been landing more and more to the head with every passing year, as seen from the yearly strike distributions. But let's dive deeper into the strike accuracy for this year. Of the 520 fights that happened, there is a grand total of 623 fighters that have fought at least once this year. To put into perspective how each of them contributed to the significant strike accuracy for this year, I made the scatter plot with all 623 of them, where the x-axis is the significant strikes attempted and y-axis the significant strikes landed. The line that you see in the middle is the standard. The closer a fighter is to this line, the more accurate the fighter was with their significant strikes this year. As you can see from the chart, most fighters attempted less than 300 strikes for the year. This isn't a bad thing at all, because as you know, fights can end early by KO or submission. And some fighters haven't fought much this year anyways. For example, John Jones only attempted 10 significant strikes in his only fight this year before submitting Cyril Gunn. Whereas on the other side of champions, Sean Strickland threw a grand total of 852 significant strikes in his three fights this year, with 400 of them landing. Stuff gets even more interesting if we look at the significant strike defense for this year. Because despite also throwing a lot of significant strikes this year, Sean Strickland also defended the most significant strikes out of any champion in the UFC, capping his significant strike defense for the year at 
This, however, is not the best significant strike defense among champions or former champions this year. As we have Valentina Shevchenko over here having a defense of 62%, and Leon Edwards over here sitting at 60%. And if we move down the list, you'll find some more champions that didn't have to show their defense too much throughout the year. Okay, we get the significant strike data, but what about some of the grappling data for 2023? Well, I'll tell you right now, there isn't really much to say about takedown accuracy and control time. But if we zoom into this year and plot fighter control time as a function of cage time, and put all 623 fighters that fought this year into a graph, we find some cool stuff on the individual fighters. You'll notice right here that the fighter that had the most control time was Jailton Almeida, and he mostly got this from his 5 round fight against Derek Lewis earlier in the year. And among champions, we see Alexandre Pantoja taking the crown with 24 minutes of control time, mostly coming off of his fight against Brandon Royval. But what I find really funny about this graph is if you look further down to see some of the more striking heavy fighters, we see Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira right beside each other in cage time and control time for the year. And if it matters to anyone, yes, Alex Pereira also slightly beat Israel Adesanya in control time for the year. To wrap this video up, I'm going to step away from the stats and briefly give my personal picks for some of the fighters of the year. Starting with the female fighters, my pick for female fighter of the year is Alexa Grasso. I'll be honest, when I was watching UFC 285, I thought Valentina Shevchenko was going to finish Alexa quickly within three rounds. So when Alexa capitalized on an opening and finished Valentina instead, I was jumping out of my chair. Not only just that, but Alexa also cemented herself in the stand-up by defending her belt again in a closely contested fight against Valentina that ended in a draw. Even though there was a lot of uncertainty after that first and second fight, you can't deny Alexa Grasso and she does deserve to be at the top of the women's flyweight division. And my pick for male fighter of the year is... Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland took a fight in the new year on a week's notice, after recently losing a close decision on the last fight night of 2022. Sean Strickland ended up winning this one, but it put him nowhere near a title shot. So what does he do after? That's right, take another risky fight, this time against an unranked opponent since all the ranked fighters had fights already booked. And after hurdling that, he was still nowhere near a title shot. But shortly after the next contender for the title shot was determined and had a date of September, the contender pulled out due to injury, which left Sean Strickland with a call to answer one month away from a fight against the best middleweight in UFC history. And he took it and pulled off one of the greatest upsets in the sport of mixed martial arts. If we look back at some of the previous graphs, you'll notice that Sean Strickland was an outlier this year. He threw and landed the most significant strikes, he defended the most significant strikes among champions, and also had the most cage time out of any fighter for the year of 2023. And he did this all while taking some very risky fights. Sean Strickland is my pick for fighter of the year. 2023 presented us with another beautiful year in the UFC. We saw a lot of faces return, we saw some crazy upsets, and we even saw the growth of the new generation of rising stars. And in a more statistical view, we saw the improvement of a lot of fighters' significant strike accuracies and overall evolution of the game. And if 2023 is an indicator of what we might see in 2024, then we're in for quite the treat as fight fans next year. Any additional graphs that you see on screen right now will be available in the community post. If you like the content, consider subscribing, liking and sharing the video, and leave a comment down below for discussion or video suggestions. And please be respectful in the comments section. Happy New Year everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.